hello students in our previous lecture we are complete our 4.2 content in unit number 4 okay that is computation of income and gain profit and gain from business or profession okay in this lecture we are going to start a new content of unit number 4 that is 4.1 computation of income from salary okay so here income from salary meaning of salary income under the head of salaries would cover all remuneration due or paid to a person in respect of the personal services rendered by him during the course of employment contract whether express or implied such charge presuppose the relationship of an employer and an employee or a master and a servant in a con contrast to that of principal and an agent sometimes it is difficult to draw a line of distinction between the two kinds of relationship the distinction is however important because only income earned as an employee or a servant is taxed under this head of salaries whereas income earned as an agent is taxed under the head of profits and gain from business or profession one of the differences between the relationship of master and servant and of principal and agent in general is that a principal has the right to direct what work the agent has to do okay and in a master or a master has a further right to direct how the work is to be done okay so here salary means any payment made by the employer to the employee at regular interval for manual or non manual services rendered as per the written or oral contract of the employment okay so it is a relationship between employer and employee the employer has paid a remuneration okay paid a remuneration to the employee for his services or for the services provided by the employee during the course of his employment okay it is called a salary okay so here definition is given under section 17 sub section 1 that is salary includes wages any annuity or pension any gratuity any fees commission perquisites or payments in lieu of salary then any advance of salary then any payment received by a employee in respect of any period of leave okay so leave salary is also included in salary then annual accretion to the balance at the credit of employee participating in a recognized provident fund to the extent to which it is chargeable to the tax okay so it is also included in the salary of the SEC. Then here basic charges. So salary means what? So salary means uh, whatever the given to the employee from employer. Okay. In kind or in cash. Okay. In kind or in cash are included in the salary of SEC or salary of employee. Got it. then here basic charges basic charges first point a salary due from an employer of a former employer to an ssc in the previous year whether paid or not it is called a accrual or due basis okay it is called a accrual or due basis uh, it means under this principle the income from salaries taxable when it becomes due or receivable okay when it becomes due or receivable then second basic charge is that any salary paid or allowed to him in the previous year by or on behalf of an employer or a previous employer whether due or not okay it means that 
under this principle the income from salary is taxable when it is received by an employee from employer it means it is a principle under this method or under this uh, system okay under this system or under this principle uh, salary is taxable when it is received from employer okay when it is received from employer by employee okay and uh, first condition or first principle is that uh, a salary is receivable or due okay it is taxable or we compute a taxable salary then third any arrears of salary paid or allowed to him in previous year by or on on behalf of an employer or former employer if not taxed earlier okay it means any arrears of salary paid or allowed to him in the previous year by or on or on behalf of the employer or former employer if no charge to tax in any earlier previous year got it so it is arrear salary given this three basic charge of salary then uh, we go to study a various exemptions related to the salaries income under section 10 so here we go to study a we go to study a various exemptions okay exemption means tax free income okay or the limit is given here that is uh, lim limit is given that is some income is exempted up to certain limits okay so we study this point so here uh, various exemptions related to salaries income under section 10 so first point is that leave travel concession okay so leave travel concession under section 10 sub section 5 okay so here as per the section 10 5 in the value of any travel concession or assistance received or due to the ssc from his employer for himself and his family in connection with his proceeding on leave to any place of india the amount exempted can in no case exceeds the expenditure actually incurred so here the amount exempted up to or cannot exceeds the actual expenditure incurred on traveling okay so here first point is that that is amount is exempted okay amount is exempted up to expenditure incurred on traveling or second one is only two journey okay only two journey in a block of four years are exempted so here so here remember that the leave travel concession is it means uh, the employer gives a leave travel concession or provide a facility to the employee uh, for traveling or leave concession to himself or to the family of that ssc in connection with proceeding of leave uh, to the place of india so allowable exemption to that ssc is actual expenditure incurred on traveling or to journey in a block of 4 years whichever is lower is allowed for deduction got it whichever is lower is allowed for deduction so actual expenditure incurred or only two journeys okay in a block of 4 year whichever is lower it means which amount is lower is allowed for exemption or it will be deducted from that amount then second point is gratuity so gratuity under section 10 sub section 10 so here uh, gratuity for government employee okay for government employee first point that is gratuity for government employee here for government employee the gratuity is fully exempted from tax okay 
for government employee gratuity is fully exempted from tax or tax free for government employee only remember this government employee so gratuity for government employee is fully exempted from tax so here we read it any death come retirement gratuity received by government employee under specified rule that it means specified rule means gratuity covered under gratuity act 1972 okay so the amount or gratuity received by a government employee is fully exempted or fully exempted from tax here okay fully exempted from tax got it fully exempted from tax for government employee under section 10 subsection 10 gratuity for government employee is fully exempted from tax then second part that is b non government employee in non government employee uh, there are also a two kinds okay so here uh, non government employees so non government employees allowable exemption for gratuity is given okay allowable exemption of gratuity is given first point that is where where an employee are covered by the payment of gratuity under the gratuity act 1972 okay if an employee has covered the gratuity amount under the gratuity act 1972 then the allowable exemption for that ssc will be given here so here we have to compute a gratuity okay for non government employee and that employee has covered his payment under the gratuity act 1972 then here minimum of the following through sorry minimum of the following three is allowed for exemption okay so here first point okay here we also says here that gratuity exempted will be minimum or list of the following here list of the following list of the following got it so here Uh, gratuity exempted will be minimum or list of the following it means uh, whichever is lower amount is allowed for deduction for non government employee and that government employee covers the payment of his gratuity under gratuity act 1972 that is here first point actual gratuity received okay actual amount of gratuity received by employee second 15 days salary into completed years of services and third rupees 20 lakh okay so whichever is lower which amount is lower among these three is exemption to that ssc is exemption to that ssc from gratuity got it exemption for that ssc from gratuity okay then second point that is for other employee other employee means non government employee but uh, the ssc will not cover his payment under gratuity act 1972 the ssc will not cover a payment of gratuity act under gratuity act 1972 so here the allowable exemption or um, exemption here allowable exemption for gratuity not covered under gratuity act that is minimum of the following three actual gratuity received or half months average salary or rupees 10 lakh whichever is lower for exemption got then third point that is encashment of earned leave or leave encashment under section 10 subsection 10a in this point uh, first point is that encashment of earned leave during the service period so encashment of 
live during the service period is fully taxable what it is fully taxable if an employee does not avail or uncovered his a liu and instead choose to incash such liu while still being in the service then the incashment of liu is fully taxable to that employee then incashment after retirement okay second point is that incashment after retirement so here incashment after retirement where an employee uh, receives cash payment in respect of earned liu not uncovered by him at the time of retirement or resignation it will be exempted from tax to the extent as stated below so in cashment of leave after retirement here we consider a 3 or whichever is lower or minimum of the following 3 that is for government employee okay so here uh, for government employee if the leave in cashment after retirement then Uh, it is fully exempted from tax to the gov government employee here for government employees any payment received as encashment of unveiled leave at the time of retirement whether or on superannuation or otherwise by government employees fully exempted from tax so leave encashment for government employee at the time of retirement or after retirement it is fully exempted got it so here remember this for government employee the leave encashment is fully exempted at the time of retirement or after the retirement second point is that non government employee so non government employee is given here non government employee any payment received as encashment of unveiled leave at the time of retirement whether on superannuation or otherwise by non government employee it is exempted from tax to the extent of minimum or least of the following okay so here also given a computation okay for cash equivalent leave due at the rate of average salary okay okay cash equivalent of leave due at the rate of average salary that is earned leave entitled for exemption cannot exceed 30 days for every years of actual service with the employer from their this service he has retired okay so actual leave or cash equivalent to the leave of average salary of that ssc then second one is 10 months average salary then c the amount of leave in cashment actually received it means actual cash received for in cashment of leave and last one is the amount specified by the government if date of retirement after 1st april 1998 amounted to rupees 3 lakh whichever is lower is allowed for exemption to the non government employee here remember that for government employee the leave in cashment is received <coughs> sorry the leave in cashment is received after retirement then fully exempted and non government employee minimum of the following three that is cash received equivalent to the salary or average salary group or second point that is 10 months average salary third point that is the amount of leave in cashment actually received and third point is the amount specified there by the government if date of retirement after 1st april 1998 amounted to rupees 3 lakh whichever is lower fourth point is that pension okay pension under section 10 sub section 10a so uncommuted or periodical pension for government and non government employees this pension is fully taxable uncommuted pension is fully taxable whether the employee is government employee or non government employee so got it so remember this uncommuted pension is taxable whether the ssc is government employee or non government employee then b point or b part that is commuted pension that is first point in commuted pension first point government employees so for government employees any payment received in commutation or commutation of pension by all categories of government employees fully exempted from tax so here 
commuted pension of government employee is fully exempted from tax remember this commuted value of pension is fully exempted from tax then non government employees the commuted value of pension is exempted from tax to the extent of following so here in first point that is where the employees receives any gratuity okay any gratuity is received by non government employee then uh, value computed on pension is 1/3 of the pension okay so how to compute so here 1 divided by 3 into commuted value into commuted value of pension received divided by commutation in percentage into 100 got it so if a gratuity is received then the value of pension is commuted with the help of this formula and the amount is all allowed for exemption so here commuted value of pension is exempted then b point or b part is that if a employee does not received gratuity the commuted value of pension is one half okay so commuted value of pension is one half so how to com compute so how to compute so here formula is given one half divided by 1 divided by 2 multiplied by commuted pension received divided by commission into 100 commission in percentage into 100 we get a exemption amount or exempted amount okay so here uh, for government employee it is fully taxable if pension is uncommuted then fully taxable commuted pension for government employee fully exempted non government employee we have to commute the pension of non government employee if the employee has received a gratuity then value of commuted pension is 1/3 into commuted pension received divided by commission in percentage multiplied by 100 when an employee does not received gratuity then the commuted value of pension is 1/2 okay so 1/2 into commuted pension received divided by commission in percentage divided into into 100 okay then provident fund <coughs> next point is provident fund so exemption in respect of provident fund so provident fund is a welfare fund constituted for the benefit or for the retirement of the employee okay for the benefit of retirement of the employee here provident fund is a welfare fund constituted for the benefit of employee with contribution towards the fund from the employees as well as the employer in case of urgent requirements of long term purpose the employee is permitted to withdraw from provident fund subject to certain conditions a certain amounts every month at a specified percentage of the salary of the <coughs> sorry is deducted at source and deposited in the provident fund account of the employee it means provident fund is a contribution of the employee and employer for the retirement benefit of the employee got it here types of provident fund is given that is statutory provident fund recognized provident fund unrecognized provident fund public provident fund okay so statutory provident fund means this fund or this provident fund is maintained by government semi government or local authorities universities etc this fund is constituted under the provident fund act 1952 okay this fund is constituted under the provident fund act 1952 it's called a statutory fund okay then recognized the provident fund means this is the provident fund which is established under a scheme framed under the employees provident fund act 
This is the fund which is recognized by Chief Commissioner of Income Tax as per the provisions contained in the Income Tax Act 1961. So, <clears throat> recognized provident fund means it is recognized by Chief Commissioner of Income Tax as per the provision of income tax contained in the Income Tax Act 1961. This fund is maintained by a commercial establishment, scheduled banks, factories, etc. Okay, it's called recognized provident fund. Then unrecognized provident fund means this provident fund is the fund which is not a statutory or recognized fund. It means those fund which is not a statutory or recognized fund is called unrecognized provident fund. Then fourth one is public provident fund. The public provident fund means the central government has established the public provident fund for the benefit of general public to mobilize the saving to encourage the saving among the general public for that purpose the public provident fund is established by the central government any member of the public can participate in the fund by opening provident fund account at the state bank of india or its subsidiary or other nationalized bank the tax treatment in respect of provident for firms are as follows so tax treatment for provident fund is given here uh, so we discuss this tax treatment for provident fund in our next lecture so here uh, in our today's lecture we studied a meaning of salary as well as uh, basic charge and various exemptions related to income of salary baka ma ya madhe income from salary manje kay tar employer ne employer जे का रेमोनरेशन एम्प्लॉईला देतो सॉरी जे का रेमोनरेशन एम्प्लॉईला देतो कशाशा बाबती एम्प्लॉईन जे का वर्क के एम्प्लॉयर सा बदलत जे का दिल जता मटल जैलरी ओके यहां जो एम्प्लॉयर एम्प्लॉई रिनेशनशिप वॉट एवर मे बी गिवन टू द एम्प्लॉय बाय द एम्प्लॉयर इज कॉल्ड सैलरी एंड सैलरी इन्क्लूड वेजेस एनी एन्युटी और पेन्शन एनी ग्रैच्युटी एनी फीज कमीशन परक्विजिट्स और प्रॉफिट इन लिव ऑफ सैलरी गॉट इट देन एडवान्स सैलरी या सर्वान का मटल जता सैलरी मटल जता तो बेसिक चार्ज मजे का सैलरी कभी टैक्सेबल होते कि कशी कंप्यूट के लिए जे मैं ये दोन पार्ट है तो मजे एक्रुअल और ड्यू बेसि वरती अपन सैलरी कंप्यूट करते एक है ती रिसिप्ट बेसि वरती रिसिव्ड बेसि वरती मैं ये एक्रुअल और ड्यू बेसि का है तो यह प्रिंसिपल का संगत तो सैलरी तुम्हारा मिले कि मिलाली कि मिलाली न सेल एक्रुअल मजे का पेड और नॉट रिसिव्ड और नॉट ओके मजे एक्रुअल लक्ष द प्रिंसिपल सेज दैट द सैलरी इज टैक्सेबल व्हेन इट बिकम्स ड्यू ओके यना है देना है ओके okay. अपन का पद्धति एक टैक्सेबल सैलरी कंप्यूट करना है कि सैलरी ड्यू और नॉट मजे मिलाली कि मिलाली अल तो मजेस मटल तो रिसिप्ट बेसि ओके मजेस का है तो अंडर दिस प्रिंसिपल अंडर दिस प्रिंसिपल द इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी इज टैक्सेबल व्हेन इट बिकम्स और व्हेन इट इज रिसीव्ड फ्रॉम एम्प्लॉयर व्हेन इट इज रिसीव्ड फ्रॉम एम्प्लॉयर इट इज द बेसिक चार्जेस एंड वी कंप्यूट ए सैलरी ऑन रिसिप्ट बेसि ओके सैलरी अपन को बेसि कंप्यूट करना है रिसिप्ट बेसि वरती कंप्यूट करना है क्या जे अपन पे मे डिडक्शन सॉरी डिडक्शन नहीं आल मनत एक्जम्शन मजे टैक्स फ्री इनकम का ही इनकम सैलरीम टैक्स फ्री है तो अपन पाएल मैं लीव ट्रैवल कन्सेशन क्या एक्जम्शन का है तो ऐक्चुअल एक्सपेन्डिचर इनकर्ड ऑन ट्रैवलिंग मजे जो का खर्च ट्रैवलिंग तो कि दोन जर्नी एक ब्लॉक की एक ब्लॉक कि वर्षाच है चार ब्लॉक का जी कमी अल वैल्यू ती तुम्हारा एक्जम्शन दिल जाए क्या ग्रैच्युटी अपन ये पाल ग्रैच्युटी मे गवर्मेंट एम्प्लॉय पाल नॉन गवर्मेंट एम्प्लॉय पाल म गवर्मेंट एम्प्लॉय अल तो मिलनी ग्रैच्युटी ऐट द टाइम ऑफ रिटायरमेंट 
फुल्ली एक्जम्पटेड है मजे टैक्स फ्री है नॉन गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय सा कम्प्यूटेसन है क्या दोन पार्ट पड़ेले हैं तो मजे पहला कि जो एम्प्लॉई ग्रैच्युटी पेमेंट जे है तो कवर करते ग्रैच्युटी ऐक्ट एक बहत्तर प्रमाण तिलना जा रहा एक्जम्शन तो है मिनिम ऑफ द फॉलोइंग थ्री मजे खाली दिलले जे पॉइंट अपन वाचले ओके okay, जी वैल्यू तिनी मदली कमी अल ती एक्ट रही मैं ऐक्चुअल ग्रैच्युटी रिसीव्ड कि पंद्रह दिवस की सैलरी गुणिले कम्प्लीटेड इयर्स ऑफ सर्विस ऑफ दैट एस एस सी कि रुपीज वीस लाख रुपये या तीन ही पैकी जी वैल्यू कमी अल ती तुम्हारा एक्जम्शन सा दी जाए कि ती वैल्यू तुम्हें टैक्स फ्री रहे अदर एम्प्लॉई मजे को जे एम्प्लॉई नॉन गवर्नमेंट है परंतु ग्रैच्युटी कवर के लिए नहीं ग्रैच्युटी ऐक्ट प्रमाण मैं भी सुधा का एक्जम्शन दिल्ला है मिनिम ऑफ द फॉलोइंग थ्री ऐक्चुअल ग्रैच्युटी रिसीव हाफ मंथ्स एवरेज सैलरी बेस्ड अपॉन टेन मंथ्स एवरेज सैलरी इमिडिएटली प्रोसिडिंग्स और रुपीज टेन लैक विच एवर इज लोअर क्या तीसरा पार्ट अपन जो पाला तो लीव इन कैशमेंट लीव इन कैशमेंट मधे ए पार्ट पाला तो मजे जी लीव इन कैशमेंट है ती सर्विस पीरियड मधे मिला ती फुली टैक्सेबल राहल क्या इन कैशमेंट आफ्टर रिटायरमेंट मजे लीव इन कैशमेंट मिला ओके कभी तो रिटायरमेंट नर मग ये दोन पार्ट एक गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय नॉन गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय अल तो फुल्ली एक्जम रहे ओके जर लीव इन कैशमेंट मिला आफ्टर रिटायरमेंट एखाद एम्प्लॉईला परंतु तो कोता अल गवर्मेंट ओके एखाद गवर्मेंट एम्प्लॉईला लीव इन कैशमेंट आफ्टर रिटायरमेंट मिलत अल तो ती टैक्स फ्री है एक्जम्टेड है नॉन गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉई बाबती तस नहीं नॉन गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉई बाबती अपने कम्प्यूट कराव लगते का जी कमी वैल्यू अल ती आप इत एक्जम रह मग ते का संगित है कैश इक्विवेलेंट टू द एवरेज सैलरी मजे जी इन कैशमेंट कि लीव इन कैशमेंट मिले ती एवरेज सैलरी बराबर अल ती कन्सिडर करा कि दह महीन की एवरेज सैलरी कम्प्यूट करा कि तीसर ऐक्चुअल तुम्हारा इन कैशमेंट कि मिलते थे कि गवर्नमेंट ने स्पेसिफाइड के लिए कि जर रिटायरमेंट एक चार एक अठ्याण्णव नर चेल तो तीन लाख रुपये या चार पैकी जी कमी वैल्यू अल ती तुम्हारा टैक्स फ्री राहल क्या पेन्शन अपन पाल पेन्शन मधे अनकम्यूटेड पेन्शन अल तो फुल्ली टैक्सेबल रहे ओके मो तो गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय आसो कि नॉन गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय आसो पेन्शन अनकम्यूटेड है तुम्हें ती का राहल फुल्ली टैक्सेबल राहल वेदर द गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय और वेदर द एस एस सी इज नॉन गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय कम्यूटेड पेन्शन अल तो गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉईला टैक्स फ्री राहल नॉन गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉईला कम्प्यूट करावी लगे कश कम्प्यूट करावी लगे जर क्या ग्रैच्युटी अल तो ग्रैच्युटी अल तो वन थर्ड वैल्यू तुम्हारा का लिए जाए दी जाए मैं वन थर्ड कश कम्प्यूट के लिए जाए तो वन डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री मल्टीप्लाइड बाय कम्यूटेड पेन्शन रिसीव्ड डिवाइडेड बाय कम्यूशन इन पर्सेंटेज मल्टीप्लाइड बाय हंड्रेड इफ एम्प्लॉई डज नॉट रिसीव्ड ग्रैच्युटी देन कम्यूटेड वैल्यू ऑफ पेन्शन इज वन हाफ इन हाउ टू कम्प्यूट सो यर फॉर्म्यूला इज गिवन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू दैट इज वन हाफ मल्टीप्लाइड बाय कम्यूटेड पेन्शन रिसीव्ड डिवाइडेड बाय कम्यूशन इन पर्सेंटेज मल्टीप्लाइड बाय हंड्रेड ओके देन प्रोविडेंट फंड प्रोविडेंट फंड मजे का भविष्या कि रिटायरमेंट बेनिफिट सा दर महीनला तो एस एस सी काय करतो सेविंग करतो म्हणजे त्याच्या सॅलरीमधून तेवढी रक्कम दर महा कट होते आणि प्रोविड फंडला क्रेडिट होते ओके प्रोविडंट फंडला क्रेडिट होते फक्त एस एस सीचीच नाही तर एस एस सीसोबत एम्प्लॉयरसुद्धा तेवढीच रक्कम त्याच्या प्रोविडंट फंडमध्ये काय करत असते पाठवत असते लक्षात आलं म्हणजे जर एम्प्लॉई दोन दर महिना प्रोविडंट फंडला पैसे ट्रान्सफर करत असेल किंवा त्याचं तो इन्स्टॉलमेंट कट होत असेल तर तेवढ्याच रक्कम ही एम्प्लॉयर सुधा तैयार कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन मधे टाकतो प्रोविडेंट फंड मधे टाकतो कशा सा इट इज ए बेनिफिट ऐट द टाइम ऑफ रिटायरमेंट ओके फॉर द टाइम ऑफ रिटायरमेंट रिटायरमेंट बेनिफिट सा प्रोविडेंट फंड मधे पैसे टाकले जता 
मैं प्रोविडंट फंड इत प्रकार अपन पाले कि स्टैट्यूटरी प्रोविडंट फंड मैं स्टैट्यूटरी प्रोविडंट फंड मजे का स्टैट्यूटरी प्रोविडंट फंड मजे आसा फंड जो कोन मेन्टेन करता गवर्नमेंट करेल सेमी गवर्नमेंट करेल एखादी ऑर्गनाइजेशन करेल लोकल एथॉरिटी करेल यूनिवर्सिटीज करेल ओके एथॉरिटी रह हा फंड तुम्हें मेन्टेन करू श आता हा फंड कसा कॉन्स्टिट्यूट है कसा तैयार है तो हा फंड प्रोविडंट फंड ऐक्ट एक बावन नुसार कॉन्स्टिट्यूट जा तैयार है दुसरा पार्ट पाला कि दुसरा प्रकार पाला अपन तो मे रिकग्नाइज्ड प्रोविडंट फंड ये फरक का हीच नहीं हा फंडसुद्धा प्रोविडंट फंड ऐक्ट या फ्रेमनुसार तैयार है मजे प्रे प्रोविडंट फंड ऐक्ट एक बावन य स्कीम या फ्रेम वरती हा तैयार है फ्त यत एक डिफरन्स जो है तो मजे का तर ये रिकग्नाइज को चीफ कमिश्नर ऑफ इनकम टैक्स मजे इनकम टैक्स के जे चीफ कमिश्नर है तो ये रिकग्नाइज करता कशानुसार तर एज पर द प्रोविजन्स कंटेन्ड इन द इनकम टैक्स ऐक्ट नाइनटीन सिक्सटी वन मजे इनकम टैक्स ऐक्टनुसार एक एकसठ या ऐक्टनुसार ज्या प्रोविजन्स कंटेन के लिए प्रोविजननुसार तो रिकग्नाइज हो तो मटल जता रिकग्नाइज प्रोविडंट फंड आता हे फंड को मेन्टेन करू शकत तो कमर्शियल इस्टैब्लिशमेंट्स कि शेड्यूल बैंक्स कि फैक्टरीज लक्षा घया इम्पॉर्टंट पॉइंट है कि प्रो स्टैट्यूटरी प्रोविडंट फंड को मेन्टेन करू शकत तो गवर्नमेंट लोकल गवर्नमेंट सेमी गवर्नमेंट यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑर्गनाइजेशन अनरिकग्नाइज सॉरी रिकग्नाइज प्रोविडंट फंड को मेन्टेन करू शकत तो कमर्शियल इस्टैब्लिशमेंट शेड्यूल बैंक्स आ फैक्टरीज ओके अनरिकग्नाइज प्रोविडंट फंड मजे का जो स्टैट्यूटरी फंड नहीं आ जो रिकग्नाइज फंड नहीं तेल अनरिकग्नाइज फंड मटल जता पब्लिक प्रोविडंट फंड मजे का पब्लिक से सेविंग वाढ़ा इन्करेज करना सेविंग करना तो फंड तैयार किया जनरल पब्लिक अपने पैसे का करू शकते कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट करू शकते मटल जो पब्लिक प्रोविडंट फंड लक्षा आल आता हा इस्टैब्लिश को है तो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ने के लिए हा सुधा प्रश्न यू शको ओके तोनुसार आता प्रोविडंट फंड मधे इनकम टैक्स की ट्रीटमेंट कि प्रोविडंट फंडला इनकम टैक्स मधे कशी ट्रीटमेंट आते हे अपने बगाच है तो अपन नेक्स्ट कि लेक्चर मधे बगना आहोत सोप है इनकम टैक्स डिडक्शन सॉरी इनकम टैक्स मधे प्रोविडंट फंड बेनिफिट टैक्स ट्रीटमेंट मजे प्रोविडंट फंड अल स्टैट्यूटरी अल तो मिलल जा रहा डिडक्शन फॉर एम्प्लॉयर एम्प्लॉयर न कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट के किती टक्के कि किती रक्कम ही टैक्स फ्री है ये महत्वाच् लेक्चर मदे बगना है ओके सो थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच